Here's what's coming up on your horizon. Well, Oklahoma has a problem most states only wish they had. Too many jobs without the right workers to fill them. It's called a skip. We're going to take a closer look at. Stay with us for Oklahoma Horizon. Oklahoma Horizon is made possible by the Oklahoma Department of Career and Technology Education. Oklahoma's investment in career tech provides more than nationally recognized technology education and training. It produces solid financial returns for the state's economic future. Oklahoma Career Tech, elevating our economy. And the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture, Food, and Forestry, helping good people grow good things. And now, from the Career Tech Studios in Stillwater, here's your host, Rob McClendon. Hello everyone, thanks for joining us here on Horizon. Well, Oklahoma has one of the lowest unemployment rates in the nation, which by all accounts is good news. Yet there is a growing concern over the availability of qualified workers. It's called a skills gap, and it is where we begin today. And joining me now is our Andy Barth. Well, Rob, unlike most other states, in Oklahoma, workers aren't looking for jobs as much as jobs are looking for workers. It's an issue that has everyone's attention from the state capital to industry and education. Energy and manufacturing, both key players in today's economy. But with baby boomers retiring, they're leaving behind a big problem. We're seeing more and more retirements coming up of legacy knowledge leaving uh, our uh, operations. ITC Transmission is a Kansas-based company that's expanding into Oklahoma. And President Christine Schmidt says while the industry is growing, its workforce is not. So our frontline technicians, our frontline um, construction uh, workers, etc., welders, they're all starting to retire and we're needing more and more young people to go into those type of skill, uh, skilled positions. A common problem, and Carlisle Food Service CEO Mark Metter says the answers to the problem must evolve. Obviously the solutions that are in place today aren't working for us. We've got lots of people that are looking for work. We have lots of jobs, all industries and they're not fitting well together. So, so the solutions that we've lived with in the past aren't working. And Metter says the solution, a strong partnership between industry and education. I think one of the solutions is to try to, is for employers to take a more active role engaging uh, educators and finding ways to create training programs to meet the needs that em employers have. Which is where the Oklahoma Department of Career Tech comes in. State Director Marcy Mack. Uh, from our standpoint in career and technology education, it's very important to make that partnership with business and industry to make sure that we are providing the technical skills and the training to future employers or even employees, uh, future employees or employees they may currently have and they've updated their technologies or their uh, way of competing not only within Oklahoma but go globally, we can step in and, and help them customize that or and help them get a workforce that they need to be able to continue to grow. Glenn Johnson is Oklahoma's Chancellor for Higher Education and says today's good paying jobs require education after high school. The data shows that uh, over 90 percent of the fastest growing jobs in this new knowledge-based economy will be jobs that require some post-secondary education uh, and or ultimately even a bachelor's degree. And while education is imperative, Metter says students must know that a CEO is not an entry-level position. I think kids have to recognize and understand it's okay not to be um, the head of a company or not to be the head of sales, not to be an engineer, not to be in IT. It's okay to operate a machine. It's okay to be a tradesman. It can be very lucrative. It can be very lucrative. And at Mills Machining, Chuck Mills says it's often hard to convince potential employees to join the manufacturing workforce. It's pretty tough because I think that with media and with parents, you know, it's like, oh, let's all go to college and be a doctor, be an attorney, you know, be a scientist, be a forensic scientist, whatever. You know, they don't really think about manufacturing as, as a career. And there are great opportunities. You can easily make fifty to $100,000 in a manufacturing environment, and people just don't realize it. But training is a must. 
In many instances, of course, they don't have to go to college. They can go to a career tech, get a certificate, or a community college. With just a little education, maybe even just a year or two past high school, you can be knocking down some pretty good dollars. And Max says career tech is poised to meet the needs of companies from all across Oklahoma. It is diverse across the state, so we want to make sure that we're getting that local perspective of how we can fill that skills gap. All while keeping costs low. Our average tuition per hour is anywhere from $1.75 to $2.20 for an adult student who wants to come back and obtain technical skills or continue out of high school to obtain technical skills. We're fortunate that high school students can come to a technology center or be in career and technology education at no cost. It's free public education for them to obtain those skill sets. Skill sets, Metter says, are lacking in the state. In our particular uh, company here in Oklahoma City, we're having trouble finding people with enough skills to do uh, changes of our machinery for us. So we need to change molds as our product changes. We've had to go outside the state to hire the last five positions, which is not something we like to do. All the more reason, Johnson says, to have a quality post-secondary education. More college graduates, more individuals with certificates will mean that Oklahoma is going to be more competitive as we go into this uh, uh, new environment and this global economy. Where having in-demand skills will be the key to succeeding in our ever-changing economy. Well, now Governor Fallon has unveiled her Oklahoma Works initiative, which is a strategic plan to not only meet industry needs, but educate tomorrow's workforce on wealth generating jobs. Now, I'm assuming we're not the only ones in the nation facing this skills gap dilemma. We're not, Rob, but our situation is unlike most creates a low supply of skilled labor. Now that could have long-term effects because it could discourage outside business coming into the state or slow the local growth of business because of the lack of skilled labor. All right, thank you so much, Andy. You're welcome, Rob. Now, when we return, we will look at a new industry initiative to fill the skills gap. You're watching Oklahoma Horizon, featuring some of the good things that are happening in the great state of Oklahoma. Well, more than a half a million new state jobs may need to be filled by out-of-state workers. According to a new report, over the next five years, Oklahoma will add 525,000 new jobs that require a certification or a degree. Problem is, currently, only about a third of our workforce has such qualifications. Earlier, I visited with Jennifer Munnies, the executive director of the Oklahoma Educated Workforce Initiative, who funded the report. So Jennifer, your group has just finished a study. Tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, it's Oklahoma's business case for education reform. So we're really talking to the business community, trying to send a wake-up call to say this is education is an issue that you have to care about because this is a bottom line issue to Oklahoma business. You've traveled the state and talked to businesses. You know that you know, they're, they're having a hard time finding skilled workers across, across the state. And so it's really important for the business community to understand, you know, often they'll, you know, see workers comp or tax reform or something like that. They know that that affects the dollars in their bottom line. They don't necessarily see education in that same way, but it is a bottom line issue. You know, one of the most startling statistics in the report talks about how by 2020, 64% of the jobs in Oklahoma will require some kind of post-secondary education, whether that's an industry certification from career tech, an associate's degree from community college, or a bachelor's degree or higher. A majority of those jobs are actually, you know, kind of in that industry certification associate's degree level. Currently, only 33% of Oklahomans have any such degree. So, 64% of the jobs are going to require that. 33% of Oklahomans have it. You can see that there's a huge skills gap there that is going to affect business. It's already affecting them now, and it's just going to dramatically increase, especially once the baby boomers start really retiring. Mm -hmm. You know, the skills gap is going to get even bigger. Yeah, I, and I like to remind people when we say 2020, sometimes that sounds a little far off, but that's <laughs> less than five years for any it of is. us. But the good thing about a lot of these jobs, as you just said, is that maybe a, a one-year program can get someone into the workplace at a significantly higher salary. Yeah, no, it can. And, and, you know, there's a lot of discussion on the national level about the middle class, right? I mean, this is the way to solve the middle class problem in Oklahoma. I mean, you're talking about 
appealing to people who, you know, historically have not had any kind of, you know, education after high school to make them aware that there are industry certifications that can take one year, two years, where you can dramatically increase your salary. I mean, I don't think that there's a lot of people in Oklahoma that understand that with a one or two year degree, you know, industry certification from career tech, they could become a welder. There are jobs sitting open right now that are in the 80 to $90,000 range. I mean, you're talking about a dramatic increase in quality of life for Oklahomans. What is your group going to do exactly with industry to get them more involved into this process? A lot of it is about changing the rhetoric, right? Because for so long, you know, the education community thinks that business is trying to privatize education. And the business community thinks that the education people just want status quo and they don't want any change and they just want to leave things the way they are. The answer is somewhere in the middle there as far and, and making sure that Ultimately, we all want the same thing. We all want every child in Oklahoma to graduate and be able to get their dream job. That's what everybody wants in the business community and in the education community. So really trying to bring that those two groups together and really the, the point of the study and, and of OEWI in general is to really motivate the business community to engage with the education community. You know, I think that the business community, whether it's, you know, on entrepreneurial skills or its ability to adapt, you know, there's a lot that the business community has to offer the education reform movement if everybody's willing to talk together and work together. Because I think, you know, for so long it's been us versus them. And somewhere in the middle, you know, the kids get lost in, in, in all of that. So we have to engage the business community to make them see that education is a bottom line issue for them, that they have to care about this or else they aren't going to be able to find the workers that they need. But then also work, you know, side by side with the education community to say, this is why the business community is interested. We aren't you know, trying to take over our schools or trying to take over education. We want to work together to make sure that we you know, have the workforce that we need and that kids lead a fulfilling and, and happy life right here in Oklahoma. Yeah, and, and recognizing that ultimately, whether it be a certification or a degree, it, your education is about workforce. Yeah, no, and I mean, the, the business community is the end user of the education system, and, and, and I don't think that it's often seen that way, and I get it from an education standpoint, a teacher, you know, you're in the trenches day to day, you know, you aren't thinking about, you know, what's Johnny going to do whenever he graduates, you're thinking about what's Johnny going to do on his test tomorrow, mm -hmm. you know, so I understand, you know, the the you know, tendency to get kind of down in the trenches that way. And that's why you need hopefully an organization like OEWI and others to kind of do that high level, you know, we all have to look at the bigger picture here, which is workforce. And, you know, we all want, you know, parents want their kids to stay in Oklahoma and have jobs here in Oklahoma and raise kids in Oklahoma. So, you know, right now, that's not, by and large, that's not happening. We're losing some of our best and brightest, you know, whether that's to out-of-state colleges or they're leaving for better jobs after college. Oklahoma definitely needs more bachelor's degrees, but there are other higher ed options than just a bachelor's degree. And to really, un, you know, help kids understand that there are, you know, a wealth of options out there when it comes to, to jobs that they can have in the future. And I think an important point to make that every study I've seen from the governor's office on down is coming out trying to get a job just with a high school diploma now. It's just going to be a really tough life for anyone. No, and I mean, it, it's almost impossible. I mean, whether regardless of what job you're talking about, you know, I mean, we talked about welding earlier, you know, I mean, you now do that with a computer. A lot of people and a lot of students in Oklahoma don't understand that manufacturing jobs aren't what they used to be. You know, they aren't the dirty, you know, assembly line jobs that their parents and grandparents had. You know, it's sitting there working with a computer. And so even some of the jobs that, you know, their parents or grandparents were able to get with just a high school degree, you at least have to have some kind of industry certification to get now. Now, in, in your report, you featured uh, a area that we had just visited ourselves, and that's Mid-America Industrial Park. Tell us a little bit about why you like what they're doing. 
Yeah, one of the things, you know, we didn't want the report to be all doom and gloom and negative. You know, we had um, several spotlights on success. One of them, you know, not to get off topic, but is our Oklahoma's pre-K program. You know, we start out really strong. We have 74% of Oklahomans in preschool. The national average is only 26%. So we really start strong. But then talking about, you know, so we had this spotlight on success on, on Mid-America Delivers, which is in Prior, Oklahoma. They really have, you know, common education, higher education and industry work seamlessly there where, you know, in common education, jobs are the focus, you know, that we're tr trying to pair students up with their skill set to, to make sure that they have a job upon graduation fitting them into the area of higher ed that they best fit into, whether that's career tech, community college, or a bachelor's degree at, at a higher ed institution. And then most of those kids go straight on and work right there in prior Oklahoma and are able to stay home and, and have great paying jobs. And so it's a really, you know, and you talk to them out there and you have, you know, it's, it's a unique model because often, you know, common ed, higher ed, and industry, those people don't talk to one another. They don't collaborate the way that they are in prior. So we really wanted to, to spotlight them and say, this is what it can look like when everyone, you know, puts their ego at the door and focuses on the kids. Right now, if you would like to see a little bit more about the Mid-America Industrial Park, we do have that story streaming on our website at okhorizon.com. Jennifer, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me, Rob. Still to come on Oklahoma Horizon, sparking an interest in skills-based learning. But first, you learn. Well, if the state is to fill its skills gap, the work to do so may start earlier than you think. Students as early as fifth grade are already making career choices, whether they realize it or not. That's why a program called You Learn is steering students at younger ages towards subjects essential for a highly skilled workforce. With more on that, here's our J.D. Roseman. If someone were to ask you what was one thing you remember from middle school, chances are it would be something you did with your hands. You Learn Academy is doing just this. It's a program from Canadian Valley Technology Center that trains coaches and allows students in their education. It's all hands-on. I mean, there is no worksheets, there's no grading. It's all about the sky's the limit. You know, hey, what do you want to do? Okay, let me run to Lowe's and get some of that. Jody Maxey is a sixth grade teacher and Canadian Valley U Learn coach and says that student success is through their own projects and ideas. Progress that I'm making. They're building and they're designing. I've got my students are doing everything from farm equipment to coding with scratch on the computer to doing a service learning project with a lunch tray for a handicapped child in our building allowing students to learn a variety of skills that apply to real life. Kids are trying to find their passion. What do they want to do? Trying to find where they want to go in life. We're trying to really emulate real life in a real way. Canadian Valley's Scott Charlson understands the importance of empowering students and allowing them to find their passion. You Learn Academy is for every student and that's the thing. Uh, when you look at kids who are dropping out of school, where does that begin? Middle school? Okay. If kids are involved and impassioned about learning and we, and we hook them early, that's not going to happen. And according to Canadian Valley's Don together. Wilson, the concept of hands-on learning is not foreign to anyone familiar with Oklahoma's career tech system. We're not dealing with something that's new here. You learn from your experiences. That's how, a, that's how a human being learns. Experiences that broaden both the students and the coaches' minds. Like I said with the two boys that are coding, that's way out of my element. So, you know, I keep saying, I don't know, but I'm going to find out. So it's, I'm using Dr. Wilson and Mr. Charlson as outlets. I'm using Twitter. It's about taking risks, too. That, that's the other huge thing. We encourage failure. Now, what kind of a school encourages failure? But until we crash and burn, until something doesn't work, how do we learn? Turning failure into greatness, which allows this learning to take place beyond these walls. But the interesting thing that we're finding is, you know, beyond the school day, the kids are engaged in those projects and one another at home. Learning teamwork, 
and collaboration, something Coach Maxey sees increasing in her students daily. The biggest, most important for my situation, self-esteem, confidence in themselves, having a, a want to come to school and a desire to come to school because they know, hey, I can go work on my project here if I'm taking care of business over here. And a desire that instructors believe is contagious. Every child has, brings knowledge to the table. They have things that you can learn from them about. And it's once you connect to the passion, then you start to realize what's inside the individual. I like, what I like about it is having the tools to do this. If you have the opportunity to do this class, I would absolutely do it because, I mean, it's, it's a great experience. Couldn't ask for a better, a better opportunity for my kids. Now, if you would like to learn more about ULEARN Academy or if you are a teacher and want to become a ULEARN coach, they are hosting a Maker Fair on May 14th. Want to share something you've seen here today? Well, all of our episodes are streaming on our YouTube channel at Oklahoma Horizon TV. Or you can subscribe to our weekly free podcast on iTunes. Well, for Oklahoma businesses to meet new labor demands, it does take some training, and that means some tech center classes are now bursting at the seams. Joining me now is our Courtney May. Well, the growing demand for welders and skilled technicians, Caddo Kiowa Technology Center is seeing new trends in enrollment. With the number of jobs increasing, the number of students seeking training is as well. Welders and skilled technicians are in high demand more jobs are available than people going into the field, creating a gap that Caddo Kiowa Technology Center is working to fill. Every year that goes by, there'll be more and more need for welders due to the fact that older welders are retiring and uh, they're quitting the welding field and somebody's got to be filling that welding gap. Our younger welders, uh, almost every single one of them were able to give them a job somewhere here in Southwest Oklahoma. Keith Thiessen's students are filling jobs because of skills, allowing them to receive their state welding certification. First time I ever welded was an ag. Student Bobby Flynn says receiving his state certification will be beneficial to his career. This opens more doors. Uh, like if two people apply for a job and one has a state certification, one doesn't, the one with state certification is going to get hired first. There's been a need a large need for skilled welders and my primary job is to try to get state certified welders uh, to go into the welding field and uh, my students that I've had, they've had very good success rate. And not only is there a welding skills gap, but technicians are also in high demand. Diesel mechanics instructor James Jackson. There always be need for well trained technicians. You've never known a really good technician to ever look for work. Over the next 10 years, 50,000 jobs are expected to become available, putting pressure on tech centers to produce students with advanced technical and behavioral skills. And I think that's one thing we do here in a career tech. We educate the mind and the hand. An education filling the need for skilled technicians. I know that with the knowledge I've gained here, that. Anywhere I go, I'll be able to find a job, and I know that I'll be confident in my work whenever I do get a job, that I'll be able to perform as, I, as I'm supposed to. When students leave Caddo Kiowa Technology Center, they are prepared to take their state certification test, which will license them to work in the state of Oklahoma, helping bridge the skills gap. So on average, about how long does it take a student to finish one of these programs? The department requirements range anywhere from 180 to 1260 hours, and the hours vary based on the skills that you want to put emphasis on. But on average, a student can finish the courses in a two-year span. All right, not a bad deal. Thank you so much, Court. You're welcome, Rob. You can keep up with us throughout the week. Just head to OKHorizon.com where you can see more of any of our stories, read our reporters behind the scenes blogs, see what others are saying about us on Twitter, and face the facts with our regular updates. So reach out and touch us anywhere and anytime. Next time on Oklahoma Horizon, we examine how the recent downturn in oil prices could affect new graduates and the impact that could have on the energy industry long term. You've been grooming yourself for the oil and natural gas industry, and then all of a sudden there's no jobs for what you've been grooming yourself for. 
you're kind of stuck in a pickle because you could have been out there going to a power industry or going to a manufacturing engineering position. Energy and education on Oklahoma Show for the Heartland, Oklahoma Horizon. Well, that is going to wrap us up for today, but you can see more of any of our stories on our website at okhorizon.com. You can listen to us on the go with our weekly podcast on iTunes. Follow us throughout the week on Twitter at OK Horizon TV, or just become a Horizon fan on Facebook. I'm Rob McClendon. Thanks for including us in your day. See you back here next week. Horizon is made possible by the Oklahoma Department of Career and Technology Education and the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture, Food, and Forestry, helping good people grow good things. Thank you for watching Oklahoma Horizon.